Let's go, you! I absolutely love it. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. If there's threats in the area, we can use the artillery uh, on the leading edge of our attack to suppress the threats, get people's heads down. And they're flying by and they're up high in the sky. This is pretty much top gun for the Air Force. But this joint training between 2nd Battalion, 12th Field Artillery Regiment, 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 4th Infantry Division, and the United States Air Force Weapons School takes a lot of communication for every moving part One, two, three, go! to work correctly. So while the howitzers are firing below, the Army and Air Force team up on the ridge line above. Right, 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 right. Guns are re replacing about 10 minutes. Joint South Terminal Air Controllers, or JTAC, manage the airspace, while the Joint Fires Observers request, yeah. control, and adjust surface-to-surface -surface fires, in this case, the heavy artillery. The roles on the ground are essentially the eyes and ears for the A-10 Warthogs, who need the suppressing fire. But the reason this is all critical for the weapons school? They've been simulating the artillery, and when you simulate artillery to, through nothing but voice uh, commands, there's a lot of artificiality to it. It builds confidence in artillery. And then that allows us, you know, a one-minute window to come in there, kill tanks, you know, two at a time per aircraft, and then on our egress, we can turn the artillery back on and have them cover us. It's the real firepower and realistic scenarios that are valuable for both military fighting forces. Reporting from Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, I'm Army Sergeant Megan Berry.